Ever wondered what London might have looked like if the Nazis had won World War II? The British never had to find out, but thanks to international diplomatic protocol, we can get a glimpse of what it might have looked like if history had turned out a little different. This is Negatives. We look at the stories behind the most iconic military photos from around the world. How do we explain this picture? Just another Nazi funeral, right? A swastika draped coffin, government officials, military personnel, and a crowd of onlookers dressed in their finery. But look closer. Those are British Army troops escorting that coffin. Soldiers from the Grenadier Guards and King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery. That's a Nazi flag, draped over a coffin in central London, outside Buckingham Palace. And these onlookers? They're British, including British politicians. There were reports in newspapers at the time that even royal family members had given the Nazi salute. In order to get to that picture, we have to rewind a few years to 1932 and this man, Dr. Leopold von Hoesch. He first came to Britain as a representative of Germany's Weimar Republic, the liberal, culturally progressive government which ruled Germany between the two world wars. He was an old fashioned diplomat and he took up his post a whole year before the Nazi party gained power in Germany. Von Hoesch was a popular figure amongst the ruling classes in Britain and worked tirelessly to maintain Anglo-German relations. But by 1934, Hitler had taken power and von Hoesch had de facto become a representative of the Third Reich. It was no secret that von Hoesch was no admirer of the Nazi party and Hitler. Von Hoesch often challenged him, sending messages back to Germany about his distrust of the Führer's entourage who had muscled in on the government. He was particularly despairing and vocal of von Ribbentrop one of Hitler's henchmen he found especially distasteful. Over the next few years, Hitler would be frequently annoyed by his ambassador in Britain, who continued to oppose him. Things came to a head in March 1936, when Hitler invaded the Rhineland, the demilitarised area between Germany and France. Von Hoesch denounced the action, accusing the Führer of deliberately provoking France and Britain. This was a rare voice of dissent against the Führer, who by now had such a grip on German society that most people feared to confront him. But, as we know, life is nothing if not full of tragedy. In 1936, von Hoesch, only 55 years old, died in his bedroom from a stroke. Maybe his life had been shortened by the stress of maintaining relations between Britain and the new National Socialist Party. The British government, in accordance with international diplomatic protocol, gave the German ambassador a state funeral. And in accordance with protocol, that would involve the use of the flag of the Third Reich Nationalist Socialist Party, the swastika. And everyone knows that the British know how to do ceremony. The ambassador's coffin, draped in the swastika flag, was carried from the embassy by British Grenadier Guardsmen with their iconic bearskin hats removed. The coffin was ceremoniously placed on top of a gun carriage from the Royal Horse Artillery. This practice is reserved only for the British monarch. Close members of the royal family or, with permission of the monarch and parliament, highly distinguished members of society. The cortege, flanked by guardsmen on foot, and without riders from the Royal Horse Artillery alongside past Buckingham Palace in St James's Park, where it received a 19-gun salute from the guns of the Royal Horse Artillery. In 1936, written in April 1936, at a time when the Nazis were already a worrying spectre on the pages of the newspapers every day, the Times celebrated von Hoesch's traditional cultured manner. He spoke beautiful English in soft, modulated tones, and the theme of all his speeches was the cultivation of better Anglo-German relations. Though a bachelor, von Hoesch entertained hospitably at the embassy, and with his sincerity and personal charm made many friends among English statesmen. He had a distinguished bearing and was always particularly well-dressed. 
Von Hoscher's coffin was transported by train to Dover and carried aboard the British destroyer HMS Scout back to Germany. Back in his homeland, at the funeral, it was noted not a single Nazi attended. Von Hoch was replaced as ambassador to Britain by Von Ribbentrop, the same Von Ribbentrop who he had been so vocal about in Hitler's government. By 1939, Germany was in all-out war with the rest of Europe, including the British. The rest is history, and thankfully, we never again saw swastikas flying over London. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our other great series.